I've explained this in two of my videos, the Senate Nezi monster call and the Tism report, a shitstorm of drama. But I thought I'd explain this all in one go so you can see exactly what Lyo Convoy is doing. One of my earliest interactions with Lyo was at the end of 2022, in a Discord I made to discuss the Septi drama and how the Senate went about it. Hopeless Peaches was also there, and afterwards I asked Peaches about the FCK. She claimed that she didn't remember much and then immediately left the server. Early 2023 and Slimmers gave me the Discord server of the FCK, where I learned that Peaches was more involved than she let on. I want to note that as early as March of 2023, Lyo knew I was making a series talking about the FCK. On April 13th, Lyo and I discussed Peaches because I had asked about the drawing of her and Toasty Vanilla bathing one another a few days before, around the 6th of April. On April 26th, Lyo let me know the call with Nezzy Monster had been agreed to, and the call was done on May 7th. That call can be summarized as any of Nezzy Monster's dishonesty, lies by omission, inconsistencies or false accusations being shoehorned or pushed aside to talk about the mean and rude things that I said. The way the Senate handled this call made it clear it was a very biased environment, which at the time was surprising, but looking back, it shouldn't have been. The Senate server was initially a barbarian server. It was a bit edgy up until Lyo adopted Hopeless Peaches and the two began collabing with one another, so the art audience from Hopeless Peaches began flocking to Lyo Convoy, one of the main contributors to the growth of his channel. And it's also why the Senate became even worse after Peaches' involvement. This is also why Lyo started his progressive political grift with the pronoun shit. It's not him maturing for the better, it's him putting on an act to keep that Twitter crowd of an audience watching his videos and sticking around. The call with Nezzy Monster was the second red flag. It was during and after the call that Lyo told me he wanted to be invited to the FCK server because he had seen my meme about Miss ZZ spamming degenerate copypastas about boy pussy and my comments back in 2020, just a few months after calling me a child. Because of the worry that they may delete logs, particularly Toasty Vanilla, if Lyo was invited, the idea was to invite Lyo on an alt account that didn't look like him. Something tells me that slipped Lyo's mind because the alt that he wanted me to invite him on was literally named Lyo Man 2. And to address a claim that I made previously about this alt, I was wrong. Lyo did not delete this account, that is on me, and that was a misunderstanding. It was around this time, August of 2023, that a couple of people began warning me that Lyo was likely taking this at an angle to protect his precious peaches. At the same time, I got busy with work, my real family, and in my free time editing my series which my audience knows was already behind. I pushed those silly ideas of Lyo being a snake aside and decided in October that I would invite him, even offering to do so. But he was ghosting me. Then I was randomly removed from Senate, and he later unadded me. As my series began releasing, there seemingly was no issue. That was until February, when I announced an additional episode on the FCK server. Two or three days before my premiere on the FCK server, shit hits the fan. AdLibs put out a statement, and in it mentioned Doodle Tones in the Kirby roleplay. Doodles did not like that one bit, and made a video about it, to which I will also be discussing. On February 25th, a day before my premiere, Hopeless Peaches puts out a Twitter thread to take accountability, leaving quite a few things that happened in the FCK server out of the thread, like the fact that she made a joke about how the porn being sent in could result in exposing them, or that she entered a voice call with Toasty Vanilla jerking off, and that she later made a drawing of her and Toasty Vanilla bathing one another, and that she returned to the FCK server later when Toasty Vanilla invited her again. It was this same day that Lyo admitted in the DMs of someone named Laka that he had the FCK chat logs for months, and told them that I was withholding them from everyone. In fact, he he messaged Laka because his spy informed him of Laka joining the FCK server. Lyo himself was not in it. Having these chat logs and a spy in the server, and the spy in the server no doubt would have told him that I invited two other people in the server to help collect evidence. And yet he's claiming I'm withholding it from everyone. Since Lyo's had these logs for months, by his own fucking admission, a few questions come to mind. He's accusing me of withholding them from the public, presumably, yet he's had the logs for months and never released them himself. By his own fucking logic, he's done the exact same thing. And if Peaches was truly interested in that taking accountability bullshit, why did she wait until a day before my premiere? Am I to believe that Lyo never mentioned and discussed the FCK chat logs with his favorite adopted daughter Peaches? Oh wait, no, his only adopted daughter now. The whole time he had these logs? And if that's true, why didn't he? Since he cares so much about accountability. Any excuse he could offer only prompts a new question. It was the same day of my premiere, the 26th of February, and a video on some random fucking issue that Doodle Tones had with someone else. That Lyo, of course, quickly rushed a segment at the end to discuss me and the FCK shit. In it, he first claims I'm the false accusation supreme. They're not the only freak in this server, though. This server is owned by someone named Inlaw. A person that initially came on the scene because they got upset spaghetti that Peaches called out the gross actions of Nix and Jackie in the Glitchtail chats. Truly, the best of priorities. Her server has such hits as, Carve my name into your thigh, girl. 
and Fox Mafia associate Kumo, zoo porn enthusiast Gilded Pooh, former Fox Mafia member North, and hanging out in Kumo's server with In-Law is the latest false accusation supreme himself, Akumu. Then says he draws the line at lying. We'll get into him later. You know who else is in In-Law's server? Conundrum. Nice company he keeps. What, did you think we wouldn't know? One of the longtime members of that server came to us the moment these freaks started joining to tell us what's going on. These people care so little about victims of predation that they'll release a call some fool gave them that he had no permission to do, completely disregarding the victim's wishes. Because they care so very much about what's right. Now, let me address the Akumu comment. I'm not going to deny that Akumu was done wrong in the past by ArtCC people. If he wants to address that, he can. Specifically some comments made to him by Miss ZZ. However, I draw the line at lying. And then says that there's a reason I won't release the logs until after my video drops. Because it gives me the control of the narrative. There's a reason he's not going to release the FCK logs until after the video drops. It gives him control of the narrative. Oh, how fucking ironic. What narrative is that, Lyo? The timing of when the FCK chat logs are released won't magically change the information in the server that anyone and everyone can see with their own fucking eyes. He has the chat logs himself. He could compare the chat logs to the screenshots in my video to see if I doctored or altered anything, but I didn't. The only altered screenshots that are in my video are the ones that have porn because I have to blur that for YouTube. Trying to control the narrative would be never releasing it. Trying to control the narrative would be withholding the logs until you absolutely have to discuss it like you and Peaches did. Trying to control the narrative would be rushing a sloppily made last segment where you project your own faults onto someone else so that none of your audience sees you for the liar that you are. But let's keep going. We, however, had a longtime server member give us access to the logs that Akumu will not release. Logs I asked him for months ago, by the way, that he refused to give. Not only to me, but to other adults who asked. As I previously established with the DMs with Laka, he's seen that Laka was invited to the server and questioned Laka as to why he was there, wanting to know what he was curious in, which is in and of itself a little suspicious considering it's a day before my premiere. But this means that the spy informed him that Laka joined. Not only that, but he's admitting to having the exports of the chats, meaning that he could see that I invited two other people into the server, who are adults, to help me gather evidence. Yet I haven't invited anyone, and I've been withholding it from everyone. This makes line number two. Now, I know some of my audience are minors, which is why I'm not going to release the logs here, because there's porn in there. Lyo, that doesn't explain why you've admitted to having these logs, the FCK server logs, for months now, yet you've done nothing with them up until my video. You stating that you have minors that watch your channel as if you can't blur the porn or censor it, you have a server that's 18 and up only, the Senate. You didn't talk about having these logs or share these logs in that server when you got them. You and Peaches only started sharing anything from those logs once my premiere came around the corner. How convenient. So this doesn't explain that, Captain Accountability. He's going to try to use cherry-picked examples to try to frame it as Peaches being okay with degeneracy being shown to kids. I'm going to break this claim down because Lyo and the Senate keep misrepresenting it to claim that it's a false accusation or misrepresentation. Peaches knew that Slamers was 15 in September of 2019. Here's a clip of that. Hello everyone, this is Hopeless Peaches, and today I have quite a serious video. I will not be hiding any names in this, mostly because they've already been spread about the internet enough, and everyone will be just saying it in the comments section anyway, so I might as well just skip over that. Instead, because I will be saying names in this video, I 100% encourage you not to go harass anyone. If you have any grievances with my video, go ahead and tell me. However, if you have any grievances or what anyone of any party do in this video that I'm talking about, don't go and tell them, please. Let's be respectful and go through this in a respectable, calm manner where we act the better person. So what did happen and what am I talking about? Well, a YouTuber by the name of Madam has recently been accused of stealing art from a 15-year-old artist called Slummers. Now, Peaches was in the server and was aware of the porn. She acknowledges the porn when she said so much porn after they spam-tagged her with the porn. She was also aware of at least one minor, that being Slummers, who was in the server. She fucking screenshotted. She posts a screenshot of the GamerZone chat inside the GamerZone chat that has Slummers in the screenshot because she scrolled back through. This was when she was talking about how she walked 
walked in on a VC when Toasty Vanilla was jerking off, and she took a screenshot of Toasty telling Slimmers that. So, Lyo, you want us to believe that Peaches didn't know that there was at least one miner in this server that she knew they shared porn in. A server which she returned to, by the way. Oh, you are not gonna believe this. I have a treat for you guys. And by a treat, I mean something that Lyo is not gonna like one bit. You guys are gonna get a kick out of it. So I reached out to Slimmers, who's on a new account because she's moved on from her old alias. And I requested that we have this conversation on her old account so that the Senate and the art community and Lyo can't say that I'm just talking to somebody else and saying that it's Slimmers. So here's the conversation we just had on her account confirming that this is Slimmers. She said, okay, I'm here. Did Peaches know you were in the FCK server? Did either of you interact? She says, yes, we 100% have. We especially interacted in calls on the server too, and she would occasionally hop in. We have literally talked back and forth through there, and at some point she literally trusted me to be on her personal friend server when the whole Kai and Omnia drama was happening. She then sends a screenshot, a different version of the one that I previously showed you all, where Peaches is screenshotting her and Toasty's conversation about the whole jerking off in VC situation. She says, like, come on. My name was literally everywhere in that server. There was no way she didn't know I was on there. This literally has to be damage control. I said, thank you. I appreciate it. She said, no problem. If you have any more questions, just let me know. And I said, will do. So to Lyo and the Senate, what's the excuse? Are you going to say that Slimmers is no longer credible? because she dared to have a conversation with me. I think that's going to be your cope for this, considering that's been your cope for everything else. The screenshots aren't credible because they came from me. Fruitcake Leaks isn't credible because they know me. It's nothing but copium. So here's the most troublesome stuff that happened in there concerning Peaches. Here we have Peaches making a joke about the KKK. This is not a joke specifically making fun of a race, just a throwaway joke about the group itself. Literally just milk toast dark humor. It's also of note that this was four years ago. All of this was. This being four years old doesn't mean shit because this server has not been talked about. Peaches did not talk about it until the day before my premiere. And almost none of the other FCK members came out to speak about this server. It wasn't until I got a hold of the logs and then I started pressing them, like Nezzy Monster, that any of them began really talking about the server. The only one that was really willing to talk about it was Mad Libs when I reached out to her months ago. Which the Senate, particularly the Soft Mink, wants to claim that I'm giving Mad Libs a pass. I'm not giving Mad Libs a pass, I'm simply crediting her for being willing to speak about it when all the other people refuse to. The point I'm making here is, the Art CC and subsequently the Senate, because it's become an Art CC hug box, have this inconsistent standard on when something can and can't be talked about. When their favorite people talk about old shit, it's okay, it's perfectly fine, it doesn't matter how old it is, this needs talked about. They have no problem wielding old shit against people. But the second other people talk about old shit, just to have a conversation about it because it's never been fucking talked about before. Suddenly it's age matters and it shouldn't be talked about. How convenient is that, Lyo? Here we see Peaches responding to Fuchsia Butters and Miss ZZ spamming porn in the server, wherein Peaches made a joke about it. Now, there's some context here that needs to be highlighted, and that's the fact that Peaches was groomed for seven years. This has fuck all to do with the server, and you know that. Unless you have proof that Peaches' groomer was in the server and keeping her quiet or something along those lines, it has nothing to do with it, and you know that, Lyo. Even at the time this all happened, they were still being manipulated by said groomer. So even if Peaches was 100% aware that there were kids in the server, which personally I doubt, Well, a YouTuber by the name of Madam has recently been accused of stealing art from a 15-year-old artist called Slummers. This is something Peaches had normalized by their groomer. You would have somewhat of a valid argument if it wasn't for the fact that Peaches made a joke about how this could be used to expose the FCK. Clearly, she had some kind of idea about how fucking weird it was. Okay, let's run with this argument. At the time, she was desensitized and normalized by her groomer. Why is it in 2021, 2022, 2023? She could have said something about the server, but didn't. The second you got the logs, she could have said something about the server because I fucking doubt that you didn't speak to her about it. That's a load of horse shit that I don't think anyone's going to buy. She could have said something, but she didn't. She only said something a day before my premiere. So that argument doesn't work either. So either way, even if she was normalized or desensitized at that time, this goes to show that she's a hypocrite that doesn't actually care about any of that accountability, moral standard bullshit, which is the entire point of my series. If your peaches oh so cared about accountability and all all these moral standards that she loves to whip out against everybody else, and you actually gave a fuck. Why is it, as you admitted you've had these logs for months, her statement about this? 
only came out a day before my premiere. Why not a few days after you got the log so that you could get all the evidence for her little bullshit thread? Come on, Lyle. Surely you can get that Mountain Dew rotted fucking brain thinking of an excuse. Peaches didn't even know any of what that creep was doing was suspicious until Cosmodor got called out later that year. That being said, this isn't something they've repeated and have also disavowed. I think I've made it clear that I'm always going to keep nuance in mind when dealing with stuff like this. If it was Peaches sending porn to children, or speaking to them sexually like Nix and Jackie, we'd be having a different conversation. But that's not what happened. You're right, Lyle. Peaches didn't have sexual conversations with minors in the FCK server, and she didn't send any porn. You're completely right. And no one fucking claims she did, and you know that. Peaches knew about porn being sent in a server with minors, about porn being shown to minors, and she knew about sexual conversations being had around minors. For fuck's sake, she literally screenshotted Toasty telling Slimmers that he was jerking off in VC. Peaches herself has gotten onto other people for not directly doing the behavior, but being complacent in it. That's the fucking hypocrisy, and you know that. No one is claiming that Peaches sent porn in there. No one is claiming that Peaches had sexual conversations with minors in there. That's not the main point. The point is the hypocrisy, and you know that. You're slimy, and you're greasy, and you're worming your way around the issue to say, well, she didn't send any porn, and she didn't have any sexual conversations with the minors in the chat, when no one is saying that she did. People are saying that she knew about it and didn't say anything. The same thing that she's gotten onto other people for. And also of note that people like Akumu surrounds himself are constantly trying to deny that Peaches was groomed. Surrounds himself, he says. You mean I was in a server that Gilded was later invited to, and that counts as surrounding myself? A Discord server is kind of like an internet town or an internet city. There are people that are in Discord servers that don't really associate with each other. I'm willing to bet there are people in the Senate that don't really know each other or associate with each other, but are still within the same fucking Discord server. You were in my Discord server, so it'd be like saying that you associated with all the people in my Discord server server just because you were in it. That you surrounded yourself with them just because you were in it. It's fucking retarded. And you know it's retarded. You don't have anything. You're desperate. Oh my god. There's someone you don't like in a Discord server I'm also in? Well, boo fucking who. You're almost 40 years old and you're using playground arguments of guilty by association. Keep in mind, this is the same guy whose audience likes to say that he's mature. But you know what? I'll entertain your childlike tantrum of pseudo-virtue. You have multiple people in your server that I don't like. You have Nez Monster, a habitual liar. You have Ellie Momelli. All three are FCK members. Doodle Tones and Nezzy Monster knew about the degeneracy in the server and didn't say anything about it. They admitted this in the call that you were there for. So you associate with them. So because you associate with them, does that mean that you condone all the shit that they get up to? No, that's right, because it's a stupid fucking argument and you know that. But Lyo is doing what Lyo has always done. To make the person he's trying to dog on look bad, he plays guilty by association. Usually saying that someone's a pedo defender or pedo apologist zoo apologist or zoo defender simply because they had a conversation with someone he doesn't fucking like as you can see he's gotten so fucking desperate that he's trying to rope me in with gilded because i'm in a server that gilded is also in and he's done this all over you can watch various calls from the senate or his various videos talking about people he constantly does it in fact, one of the earliest times he sort of did it in regards to me was mentioning that I had Cass Warfox people apparently in my Discord server. A, who are you talking about? And B, why the fuck is that my problem? Boo-hoo, nigga, there's people in my server you don't like. Any server that you join, do you run immediately to the staff team and say, I don't like this person, ban them? And you're supposed to be the mature adult here. Okay. Not only is this gross and reprehensible, but it's also just an outright lie. I've seen the logs. Here are some now. Here's one where her groomer talks about how not a pedo he is and how he has to word himself in a certain way because Big Brother is watching. Along with noting the clear age gap. I'm not going to show the rest. I don't need to. I think I've made my point. What I find interesting, though, is no one looked into fuchsia butters until all of this came out. What Lyo is doing here is shifting the topic to other people, and he does this constantly anytime anyone brings up any issue on his end, or someone that he actually fucking associates with, not just roping him in with someone else. He quickly shifts the topic to what other people have done. It's really fucking funny to watch. That's a fucking lie. I made three different videos in 2020 talking about fuchsia butter, and the same shit he's about to talk about. At the end of 2023, I released an episode in my FCK series on Fuchsia butter. The third party to scan through these logs literally just hopped into her server and find all sorts of garbage in under five minutes, which is a problem since there's miners in that server and no regulation about what's posted around them by Fuchsia herself. 
This is because Akumu is more interested in smearing someone than properly dealing with actual guilty parties. I'm not concerned with guilty parties, but but I was the first one to talk about Fuchsia's degenerate shit, and I was told by the art commentary audience, the same people that started watching you now, by the way, that I was a fucking liar, that I was stalking and harassing. And even made an episode recently in my series discussing the entire thing that went down with Fuchsia Butter. But yes, I'm not concerned with guilty parties at all. Totally. Totally. Because I didn't already talk about Fuchsia Butter. Toasty Vanilla was the person in charge of that server and gave no roles or safeguards to protect children in that server. I'd love to see accountability directed towards him, please. Please don't talk about my precious peaches. Talk about this other person. When people can talk about both. The hand that both of them had in this whole fucking server. There's nothing wrong with that, but you don't want that. You just want everyone to talk about Toasty or Fuchsia instead of your precious little peaches. People are talking about Toasty. I talked about Toasty before all of this, before my series in 2020, and what Toasty was getting up to. Peaches knew what Toasty was getting up to, and she didn't fucking say anything. Another thing, you love to talk about how people who are older should know better. You constantly whip out age against people when you're in calls and grandstanding people, asking them their age and saying that they should know better since they're older. You and Peaches both have done this. And yet Peaches, who was older than Toasty Vanilla, Nezzy Monster, who was older than Toasty Vanilla, Mad Libs, they're all older than him and should have known better. And yet, suddenly we shouldn't talk about them. We should only talk about Toasty now. Come on. And Fuchsia, you and I are going to need to have a conversation. You'll know where to find me. Just watch. He's going to do a call or a video or even both and put them together about Fuchsia Butter and upload it in his retarded fucking art community audience are then going to talk about the degenerate shit that Fuchsia Butter got up to. Not when I did it, of course, because then it was stalking and harassment, but when Lyle Convoy does it, it's suddenly different. Those standards go out the fucking window. And they're going to talk about how intimidating Lyle was and how he really shut her down. Here's one from his most recent video. How if Lyle was there, he would have done a Mortal Kombat move. Yeah, telling you right now. Now, he's not doing any Mortal Kombat moves anytime soon. But a single example may not be enough to convince people of Akumu smearing attempts being an obvious ploy. Let's read the definition of smear, just so that we can get an understanding as to what Lyo's trying to say. Damage the reputation of someone by false accusations. Slander. All right. Now let's see the slander, the false accusations that I'm apparently using. So here's another one. Akumu has been regularly spreading an RP Susie did when they were a couple of months past 18. An RP Susie herself did not make sexual, but the other party did. This is the same cope that Doodles did in the video. The other person made it sexual, I didn't. And yet Susie was perfectly fine with it being sexual. After Kirby made it sexual, Doodle Tones continued on with this roleplay. It lasted a month. Susie even came back on an alt account to continue the roleplay. In doing her research to properly address this yet again, Susie delved into her old logs and found out she had been groomed. I was there. I saw how she responded to it in real time. It's an awful thing to discover, but it explains some of her more troublesome thought processes and interests for several years. Akumu's response to that level of honesty is to claim she's using her being groomed as a shield and that she's just trying to paint anyone that questions her as a victim blamer. If you sat through that whole video and came to that conclusion, you're just a dishonest moron. I'm the dishonest moron, but your track record so far throughout this video isn't looking so good, Lyle. But first, you said I was smearing, and then you admit that the roleplay is real, so you don't deny that the roleplay is real. So what exactly is the false accusation here? For it to be smearing, I have to be using a false accusation to try to damage or affect Doodle's reputation. So where is the false accusation? Unlike you all, I actually pay attention to what you say. If you go and watch Doodle Tones' video, they admit to doing diaper shitting artwork and age regression in 2013. Then they proceed to admit later that they didn't meet their groomer Alex until November 22nd of 2014. The same year that I got super into erotic roleplay, I met this person called White Clouds 1988, also known as Alex. We used to chat a lot with each other, and when I say chat a lot, I mean we chatted a lot. We met November 22nd, 2014, so remember I was still 17 at this time. The degeneracy came before the grooming, on top of the fact that the roleplay was with Kirby, not with Alex, who is Doodle Tones' groomer. Now, there are things that will probably need to be addressed as well at a later date. For now, though, I have other things I need to do. I'm not obligated to defend myself at the behest of others. I will do so when I please. And as such, I've got work to do. Now, just to add to this, there was a call-in synod that was done on February 28th that I'd like to go over the bits and pieces of. The full thing will be linked down below. But this just adds to the sheer dishonesty from Lyo and from Synod. Bye.
fucking way. They are toasty or ZZ. Harassment is not tolerant. So harassment is fine with those people? Anyone can go to the Fruitcake Leaks Twitter and check to see what their tweets are saying. Not once do they condone harassment to anyone. The person here who's talking, the informantator, or George, is taking one tweet where they say, don't harass these people because they don't want them harassed, and then saying, oh, well then are you saying it's okay to harass the others? It reminds me of that so you're saying argument from that Jordan Peterson debate. Well, I don't know, uh, but then about an hour ago, they said, all right, it cleared my head, apologies for last night, I do not wish for harassment of anyone, only accountability and statements, the only two who I want truly gone is who I have stated many times before, nevertheless, I hope Nezzy Monster is all right. And who do they want gone? Toasty and ZZ. Well, because Toasty was on the cleared list earlier. Lyo is claiming that Toasty Vanilla's name was previously on the cleared list, and while it is true Fruitcake Leaks has changed the cleared list here and there a little bit, not one fucking time has Toasty Vanilla's name been on the cleared list. I keep up with the account, and the person who's behind that account shares their tweets with me. I keep up with it just in case I have some kind of disagreement, and so that I can keep up with what they're saying, so that if people try to misrepresent what they're saying as what I'm saying, I can say no, this is what Fruitcake Leaks is saying. Point is, I keep up with everything that account posts. On top of the fact that me and Fruitcake Leaks, before that account was even made, had established that Toasty Vanilla was very much in the wrong here. There is no fucking way Toasty Vanilla's name went on that list. In fact, I messaged Fruitcake Leaks just in case there was a tweet that I didn't see that had Toasty Vanilla's name on the cleared list to see if they ever put his name on the cleared list. And this is what they had to say. Did you ever put Toasty on the cleared list? No, I never did. If someone said that, that is a complete lie. Also, it's the innocent parties list not cleared parties list. So yet again, Lyo Convoy is lying, and lying to people in Synod, in a fucking call. The same guy who draws the line at lying doesn't like being lied to in calls. How fucking ironic. What? Yeah. It looks like this account has been grilling Toasty a lot. Odd, I thought Toasty was one of the people who was taken advantage of. Find a single person or a single tweet from Fruitcake Leaks that has ever made that fucking claim, George. Yeah. Oh, God, I Looks like it's it's as if they're they're exactly proving our points. And uh And by the way, by the way, we all know that if Toasty or ZZ tried something they would not be saying this. They'd be saying, actually, they wanted, I don't fucking know, Junkie to be the one who was held accountable or whatever. This is actually... Hold on, let Ellie talk. What? Hold on, what? What? I'm fine. All right. Apparently, Junkie got grilled in a stream yesterday. I thought that I guy was no longer around. Uh, yeah, well, apparently, like, Junkie got grilled in a stream by Laka yesterday. I only got a little bit into it before I went to bed. Ah, Laka, because, okay. Because I can't think of a more trustworthy source than fucking Laka. Not Ephraim climbing up on that pedestal to point down at someone else about credibility. Uh, okay. Well, apparently most of the stream was just going over the logs and, and asking him to uh, make a statement about them, but 90% of it was I don't know and whatever nonsense he wanted to spew out. Why do these people want a public statement? Why do they feel they're entitled to that? That's what pisses me off here. I saw Kumu say, oh, Peaches didn't take accountability because he didn't write a Twitter thread until the day before my did. video dropped. Mm -hmm. Well, no, let's ignore the fact that that's not actually true. Why is that your definition of accountability? A fucking Twitter thread. For starters, what the fuck do you mean that's not even true? Hopeless Peach has released her Twitter thread talking about the FCK. February 25th, my premiere was the next fucking day. You're denying a literal fact. Secondly, I'm not saying a Twitter thread is taking accountability. The entire point of my series, the reason I've been making it, the reason I've been building up to this, is to show people that the shit that Lyo, Hopeless Peaches, the rest of the art commentary community, even the SEC sometimes do, talking about how people need to be 
held accountable, that they need to come together to hold these people accountable, or that they need to take accountability is a load of fucking horseshit. And this can easily be shown with Lyo and Peaches, because Lyo, like a fucking idiot, admitted that he had the FCK chat logs for months now. So if he's had these logs for months, and Peaches claims to care about taking accountability, explain to me this, George. Why she released her thread addressing the FCK shit a day before my premiere. Why is that? Surely you can get that monkey brain going and whip out some kind of excuse. You don't want anything. You want the superficial appearance. You want smoke and mirrors by your own definition, or not by your own definition, by your own admission. What the fuck are you talking about? By my own admission, where did I even remotely say anything close to that? Do you have a fucking hearing problem? Do you need a hearing aid? What I've said is that these people are bullshitters. They bullshit everybody into thinking that they actually believe in accountability. Their moral standards are not consistent. I don't know. I... I can't answer that. Because guys like because guys like Kumo and Fumo, uh, Kumo and Kumo, God, they're fucking names are so familiar, are so tunnelly online that they think coming out publicly on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, or whatever fucking social media means you're repenting when it's not. We're so terminally online while you're joining in a call where you all gaslight each other into believing a bunch of ridiculous shit. I don't think someone making a post online is repenting. My whole entire point is that all of this shit is a facade from people like Hopeless Peaches and the art commentary community. My point has completely gone over your head, but you know what? Let me go ask Kumo himself. Let me see what his take on this is. Oh, hello, sir. Okay, okay. Just want to just want to go over something real quick. All right. So do you yeah. think that if someone comes out about something online, like on social media, right, about something, do you think that they're repenting, that, like they're, they're truly repenting? I wouldn't call that repenting, no. Okay, so, so you disagree then? Yeah, I would disagree. Okay, thank you. Just wanted a clarification real quick for something. Okay, why? What's up? Oh, just, you'll see, you'll see. Uh-oh, we got another notification. Uh, oh, it's just a delayed super chat thing, right? Yeah. Thank you for the five, uh, Enla. <clears throat> Based Enla. All right, well, uh, we'll talk to you later. Oh, wow. What, th that's it? You're just going to blue ball me here? Well, well I mean, I got I, I to gotta work on this. I think Vash Lancet sent me a friend request. I'm assuming this is Vash. I don't know who that is. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know who has the Alucard uh, profile picture. Okay. Well, thank you for uh, popping in, Akumu. Thank you for the surprise yeah, guest yeah. appearance, boss. Yeah. Talk to you later, bro. All right. Yep, you have a good one. Also, I want to really entertain that argument here that just because someone makes a post on social media doesn't mean they're repenting. You know what? I'm in agreement. In fact, your opinion seems to be closer to ours, bud, which means that the post that Peach has made on Twitter doesn't mean that she's repenting. Interesting how that works. Well, it's yeah, not it, just it, that. I can, I can tell you the long-term strategy here about the Fruitcake Club stuff. Here's the thing. Having people looking through the logs, which again takes time because up until now it was kind of just me and sometimes Asuka doing it. Toasty made the server. Two of the initial rooms that were made are called Toasty's Tits and Piss Throne, Piss Throne or something along those lines. Everything about that server in no way, shape or form communicated that there were going to be miners in there. To my knowledge, and Mimi is here, they can correct me if I'm wrong. Toasty is the one that sent out all the invites. There was no age gating. To my knowledge, there were no roles that were given to minors. There was no proper separation there. And any time I've seen pornography posted so far in the logs I've looked through, because it was primarily in the gamer zone, it's something that Toasty started. That doesn't change the fact that these people knew about it. Mad Libs knew about it. Nezzy Monster knew about it. Doodle Tones knew about it. Fuchsia Butter knew about it. Multiple people, including Hopeless Peaches, knew about it. That's what seems to be the consensus issue, is that these people knew and didn't say anything. And yet, if, and yet if anyone else had done this, had participated in this, or knew about it and didn't say anything, me and you both know, especially you and Peaches, would be dogging on them. And you wouldn't allow any fucking excuse to be used. And here you are constantly making excuses, or trying to distract away from the fact that all these people knew, by pointing at Toasty only. Yes, he was a massive main contributor, but those people knew, and a lot of people take issue with the fact that they knew and didn't say anything for years. If Peaches and her friends weren't involved and this was some other fucking group that you had the opportunity to grandstand for your videos, you wouldn't be trying to make these excuses and pour defenses for them.
And from what Fuchsia Butters had told me in the call I had with her yesterday, Toasty constantly harassed people to be sexual, including children trying to get them to draw not safe for work art for him. I think the only reason why the account is now focusing anything towards Toasty is because of Teddy's thread and because of what I said in the video last the other day. I do not see this room as a room that had so much mixture between children and adults that it was extremely obvious. I do not think that anybody, well, I'm not going to say shouldn't be held accountable. Obviously, people are accountable for their actions. See? I told you, these people throw the word accountability around loosely and consistently. Many of the people knew in that server that Slamers is a minor, and they knew that she was in there. Nezzy Monster, Hopeless Peaches, Mad Libs, they all knew that at least Slamers was a minor. At the very least, Slamers was a minor. They were interacting with her on a daily basis. Quit trying to distract from this and only push all the blame onto fucking Toasty. They knew about it. And if anyone else knew about something like this, you would be grandstanding them. But because your precious little Peaches was doing it, and she she knew about it. You're dying on this fucking hill. Probably should have checked around, but if you're in a space where you think it's primarily adults, you're going to act like an adult. And because my generation is so separated from most people's generations of online and activity, I'm going to, by nature, have a better filter than people who spent their entire lives online. That's why the most you guys will get out of me in terms of quote-unquote lootery is talking about how attractive I find my wife and Catwoman. Whereas these people who are raised online, that's all they really do. So they don't think, especially in the, the twilight of their adulthood, they don't think to separate that properly. Now, if I had evidence that Peaches or anybody else were sending children pornography, like directly or trying to groom them, yeah, there'd be fire and brimstone coming down on anybody who did it. But I don't have evidence of that. This is the same thing that he did in the video. He distracted from what people's actual issue is with this, well, I don't have any evidence of Peaches sending porn to kids or having sexual conversations with kids. No one is saying Peaches did that. The point being made is there were sexual conversations with minors around. These people knew that minors were around. You can keep trying to distract from that fact, but Slamers was in there. They knew Slamers' age. They acknowledged her age multiple times in the server. They acknowledged her age before the server even fucking existed in September of 2019. You and Peaches have gone on to grandstand other people for knowing about shit like this happening with a group chat of minors, with porn being sent in there, with sexual conversations being sent in there. And yet here you are trying to get a work run with that and say, well, Peaches didn't send porn in there. No one's making that claim. What I have evidence of is Akumu, Kumo, and the rest of these clowns trying their best to disrupt support systems. Disrupt support systems? What the fuck does that even mean? You're just barfing out nonsense. And go after people they've had long-standing grudges with. I've said this multiple fucking times. The FCK series is to document what the FCK were getting up to, what they did to me, and what they did to other people. That way people can see the art commentary community for what it is. A LARPy, sanctimonious, inconsistent, hypocritical mess. Because again, I have to point out, Akumu refused to give me the logs. I had to find a roundabout way to get a hold of them. Akumu has had these logs for the better part of a year. There are a multitude of reasons which you know about, which you're leaving out. So I'm going to list the ones that you know about. The idea was to invite you on an alt account that wasn't obviously you. The account you wanted me to invite you on was obviously you. Secondly, I got busy with life with a work, with taking care of animals, which I told you about, with my real family, with in my free time editing my series because I was already going to talk about all of this shit. You seem to think that I was just passing everything off for you to do when that wasn't the case. The idea was you could also talk about it. I was also getting suspicious of you considering the way things were going. Big fucking surprise, look at this now, you're lying about the situation. So my suspicions ended up being correct. But I did try to invite you October of 2020. 23, when you were ghosting me, which you comment on later in this call. Can this I is just a concerted say, effort. Go ahead, okay, can I? Well, I just have to say, it appears to be an absolutely amazing coincidence that all of the bad people in this situation are all people Akumu didn't already like.
Well, how about you mention why I don't like them, Ephraim? I don't know, getting together in a group, dogpiling me, falsely accusing me of trying to dox, accusing me of deleting tweets I never deleted to make it look like I was malicious, photoshopping evidence against me, constantly making videos about me, spying on me, but if I spied on them, it was harassment, making fun of me, but if I made fun of them, it was harassment. This list can keep going. Why don't you mention any of that? You're going to notice a common thing with people like this, from the ArtCC and the SCC. They like to talk about how I dislike these people and how I talk about these people, but they never ever mention why. The screenshots are there. The logs are public, Ephraim. Go ahead, point out what I faked in my video. I'm waiting for you. I tweeted to you about this. Point out what is photoshopped and faked in my video. What is falsely claimed in my video. I'm waiting for it. Isn't that kind of amazing? Yeah, it's also amazing that they're, part of their effort is trying to, well, undercut my credibility and try to throw stones at me because they know I'm going to back up people that I care about. No, Lyo. There was no attempt to undercut your credibility. You undercut your own credibility by getting involved and proceeding to lie about the situation in an effort to protect Peaches. And when you aren't lying to protect Peaches, anytime anyone brings Peaches up, you circumvent or move the conversation to somebody else and what somebody else was doing. When we can talk about all of them, the reason people are questioning your credibility is because of your own own fucking actions in this situation. I guess you could blame me because I'm showing them that you're lying, but I'm not gonna not show that you're lying about the situation. And you've lied about other shit too, completely aside from this situation that you didn't even need to lie about. But that's for another video. So yeah, I 100% think that's intentional. I think it's a bit of serendipity right. with Jordan going to Kumo to help plan this out, but I do not think that this is some super coincidence that this all is coming out at literally the same time. I don't. I am not remotely involved with anything to do with Jordan and Kumo. I literally decided at random that I was going to just go ahead and do the FCK server video. And then you all started fucking panicking about the situation and rushed to do damage control. He knew that I was making it once I said, hey, I'm probably just going to go ahead and work on the FCK server video. People do want it. People are saying that I'm sort of teasing them with only showing them bits and pieces of the server. I didn't tell him when I was uploading it or anything. I literally decided at random to drop all the shit. I announced that I was posting Poning Ponder Part 2 in the Mad Libs episode so I could get this episode out. There's no big scheme here. The only one plotting anything is your ass considering you had the fucking logs for months and only waited until a day before my premiere to have Peaches do her taking accountability thread and then rushed a fucking segment in your most recent video to talk about it. Or is it just a coincidence that you had your premiere a few hours before mine where you claimed that I was going to lie and misrepresent it when I fucking didn't? So please, Lyo. Project your own fucking intentions onto somebody else to fool your audience even more. This shit is easy to show. Uh, well, yeah, no, it's obviously not. Like, we aren't this fucking stupid to believe this. Uh, mm -hmm. Contrary to what they seem to think, we aren't as stupid as they are. No, really, but I'm gonna be the one... Go ahead. Really quickly, just budding in, I'm doing my hair care routine, so I might have missed a couple things, but, like, the oh thing is... Listen. He's you gay. are so what gay. What do you to do? He's gay. Well, yeah, you know, we gotta get the volumizer in. Um, but when it comes to the situation, sure, we might not be that stupid. But some, I'll give Akumu and Kumo this. They know, they know Twitter's stupid. That's how they think they can get away with this shit. <laughs> Yeah, and apparently Patchwork Heart's that stupid, and that that's fucking heartbreaking. Unfortunately, Patchwork has always been a feelings over evidence type of person. It's a little ironic to talk about how other people are stupid, meanwhile you're taking fucking Lyo Convoy at his word, despite the fact that if you watch any of my videos, which they probably haven't, they show that he's lying. He's contradicting information he would have, by his own admission, in this call to you people, and you're just glazing away. So pull his pants up when you're done. Secondly, Lyo, you're talking about someone else being emotion over evidence, right? And yet here you are, denying shit that you know is true because you have access to the FCK chat logs. To all the people in Senate, in an effort to protect Peaches, they knew that there was at least one minor in there, at the very least one minor, that being Slamers who's 15. Instead of accepting that fact, a fact that I show in my video, 
a fact that you have access to to verify, you deny and try to suggest that, well, maybe none of them knew. We don't know for certain. You have access to the logs. You do know. But you're making this claim and trying to push it as though maybe none of them knew because that means Peaches would have known, which she did. And you can't have that because then her hypocrisy would be out. I got a question. Let me see here. To do. Sorry, I, it's not taking me to your question. For, oh, okay. Did people not know there were miners in FCK at first or say for Toasty? Um, it's kind of up in the air. Because I didn't even know that Mimi here was a miner in, while they were in that server until they talked about their age openly here. So the thing is, anybody who has cursory knowledge assumes everybody knows what they know. I, yeah, uh, this is one of those cases where you have to keep in mind innocent until proven guilty. Lyo is either lying, or he didn't watch my video, and he didn't check the fucking logs that he's had for months. There are several adults in there who shared porn, or knew of the porn being shared, that were aware of at least one minor being in there, that being Slimmers. I showed in my video an entire compilation of these people mentioning Slimmers' age, before the server even existed, a month before it existed. But you know what? How about I just go to the source again? So I went to Slimmers, and I said, Did Nezzy Monster, Mad Libs, or Miss ZZ know you were in the server? She said, Absolutely, all of them knew. All three of those people mentioned that Slimmers was 15 in September of 2019. Nezzy Monster made three videos mentioning their ages. Nezzy Monster's first video on Madame that mentioned Slimmers' age was released in September of 2019. I hope you all appreciate the shit I do, because I had to watch this twice, and the first viewing actually gave me a headache. Howdy doody everyone, I'm back, and this time I come bearing a script! <laughs> so if y'all haven't heard, a Leafy was here ripoff is in some hot water for basically tormenting a young 15-year-old artist by the name of Slimer's Cryotic. Be sure to go and give her some love, by the way, all links in the description. That same month, Hopeless Peach has made a video mentioning Slimer's age. Hello everyone, this is Hopeless Peaches, and today I have quite a serious video. I will not be hiding any names in this, mostly because they've already been spread about the internet enough, and everyone will be just saying it in the comments section anyway, so I might as well just skip over that. Instead, because I will be saying names in this video, I 100% encourage you not to go harass anyone. If you have any grievances with my video, go ahead and tell me. However, if you have any grievances with what anyone of any party do in this video that I'm talking about, don't go and tell them, please. Let's be respectful and go through this in a respectable, calm manner where we act the better person. So what did happen and what am I talking about? Well, a YouTuber by the name of Madam has recently been accused of stealing art from a 15-year-old artist called Slummers. Nani made a video mentioning Slummers' age. Get it. I see where you're coming from, madam, when it comes to that. However, I don't think it's a reason to act the way you have been acting. Put yourself in Slummers' shoes for a moment. You're a 15-year-old artist. Mad Libs made a video mentioning her age. For those of you who don't know what the madam drama is, what happened is this piece of shit YouTuber who calls herself the female Leafy is here not sure why you'd ever want to brand yourself like that, but she commissioned a 15-year-old artist. ZZ made a video mentioning her age. See, Madame is a YouTuber who was interested in commissioning an artist called Slimers. Slimers, due to their age, did not have a PayPal, therefore could not accept payment. But you know what, I'm not done just yet, because I have another example from the fucking FCK server. March 12th of 2020, GamerZone. They played Scriblio. Nezzy Monster sends the link, and starts listing various characters, and then starts listing all the people who are gonna play this game. She says Nezzy, Slimmers, Null, Trent, Mad Libs, Toasty Vanilla, Lucy, Miss Zizi, Junkie, Toontown. Are you really going to sit here and fucking deny, and try and tread the line as to who knew and what not. Hopeless Peaches knew, Mad Libs knew, Nezzy Monster knew, Miss Zizi knew, Toasty fucking knew. Various people knew that Slimmers was in there and knew that she was 15. And yet you're bullshitting your fucking audience and lying to people in Senate. You have to very much be willing to acknowledge that for a fruitcake club. And so far, the only person who I think we have reasonable uh, belief is guilty is Toasty. Is, do you disagree oh, with me on that, why Elio yelled at them. Uh, one I remember seeing from, I think it was Enlaw, was at one point 
Lyo threatened to fight Jordan. Well, there was no context to that. Did Lyo literally just go up to Jordan, say, you, me, out, back, and five? Did Jordan uh, bump into Lyo while he was carrying his lunch tray, like it's the movie Three O'Clock High? Were they watching Rocky together, and one of them started running their mouth? Hey, it happens. I don't mean, know. We don't know. They don't fucking actually tell stories. They don't say claims. It drives me fucking crazy. I'm about to go to um, come on, be like, like threaten to fight me. Ignore the fact that I threaten to fight him like every fucking day. <laughs> By the way, the other, uh, issue, just, the other issue here, the other issue here is that it's being framed as child abuse, when literally every person was in their 20s, Jay being the oldest. And I've got my own things I could say about Jay. One of the reasons why I hadn't wanted to publicly address this is because of the sheer amount of damage it will do when I do, not to me, but to them, because Jay specifically makes a living off commissions. That's all Jay does. Jay does literally nothing else. So when I have to respond to this and point out that these people are pathologically lying, there goes Jay's entire livelihood. I don't know who Jay is or much about this Jay, but it's a little ironic. After several days now and after literally lying to people in the call, you want to talk about how someone else is a pathological liar. It's no wonder why the Art CC loves you so much. You do the delusional LARPy shit. You're inconsistent when it comes to accountability. Your standards suddenly change when it comes to the people you like. And you have no fucking self-awareness. And I didn't want to do that. But now I'm going to have to. Jay, Jordan, they all knew who these people were. They did this intentionally. Yeah, neither of them. They lie in it now. None of them were abused in that household. If accountability is. I'm going to resist being weaponized now because Avi and Kai are insane. At some point, I will have to do a massive video where I take every single detractor and ground them into the dust. But that's not what this one's going to have to be. This one has to focus on the accusations being made towards Peaches and being made towards me. And I'm going to, of course, have to address the FCK stuff because, let's be honest, what's going on about that is horrifically wrong and is egregious, and I will not let people get away with doing that. Would you count it as malicious intent as well? Without question. Without question, it's malicious. That's what Akumo is. He's malicious. Since when was showing people the truth about the art commentary community and how those people are, and most recently how you are malicious? You consider it malicious because, oh, now people are starting to see you for what you are, a fucking liar. You chose to go down this path. Don't go throwing a tantrum because now it's a bumpy road. But I have a piece of advice. If you want to make this easier, quit fucking lying. It's really not that hard. Sorry about yesterday, is that why? That happened in private, and you don't have to apologize for it. I have a question. Uh, I keep hearing Kumo. Uh, why don't I hear much of Mad Libs? Or... I don't know. Because Mad, Mad Libs, Libs did ran. a single. Yeah, Mad Libs did a single post and nothing else apparently. So. Ah, I see. That and Mad Libs like doesn't have anything to do with what's being discussed. Despite the fact that she was also active in FCK, but we're giving her a pass because she made a thread that was mean to uh, doodle talk. This is the same retarded shit that Mink previously claimed, and no one is giving Mad Libs a pass. She is discussed in the episode. If I didn't discuss her in the episode, then sure, you could say I'm giving her a pass. <laughs> oh, okay. It's almost like these people don't fucking care about this or something. You dare to acknowledge things that we don't want acknowledged? To talk about things that we don't want talked about? You don't care about this at all. Go fuck yourself. They don't. The entire reason Akumu went to the FCK server is because he was under the impression that's where people were conspiring about him four years ago. One, that's a false claim, and you know that. I knew a little bit about the degeneracy that went on the server through rumor, but every time I mentioned it or talked about it, I was told that I had no evidence, that I was a conspiracy theorist, that I was a liar. So that was not the only reason I went to the server. 
and you know this because I've spoken with you about this. We've had calls where I've spoken to you about the FCK. Secondly, what do you mean I was under the impression they were conspiring against me? They literally do in the fucking server. I showed just a little bit of it, a brief example from March of 2020. It is what it is. Yeah. Did you see uh, Akuma's response video to your end portion of the conundrum video? Nope. I've been busy trying to get stuff done at work. What's it saying? Well, there's it says a lot of bullshit, but uh, one part in particular mentions that uh, in, re <clears throat> in response to you saying that he refused to give you the logs, he said that he uh, was actually trying to send you an in invite to the server, I believe, and was like uh, messaging you to see if you still wanted it, and you quote unquote ghosted him. That was well after I had asked him months previous and already got a hold of the logs myself. Okay. <laughs> what a moron. Now, I already previously explained this, but am I to apologize because I actually have a fucking life and I don't sit on Discord all day arguing with autistic people for six, seven fucking hours? The point is, you did ghost me. I offered to invite you and you ghosted me. And you're calling me the moron when you continuously keep admitting that you've had the FCK logs for months? Yet you want to keep accusing me of withholding them to control the narrative. But by your own fucking admission, you've had them for months and done nothing with them. Okay, Captain Accountability. I care so much? Then explain to me this. Again, I have to repeat this. Why did Peaches wait until a day before my video to discuss it? Since you've had these logs for months and you keep fucking admitting to it. Like a dumbass. You lie and then you admit to shit that makes it worse for you. Has the Mountain Dew rotted your brain that fucking much that you can't think about anything that you say? Also, I did watch that video. The screenshots he shows don't actually prove a single thing he said. Uh, he just hoped you didn't notice that. Oh, yeah. I, I, I looked at them, but I'm also terrible when it comes to screenshots, so I just wanted to be sure. Oh, no, that, that's fine. That's fine. Um, no, even having... Uh, and by the way, I understand that, like, even pretending to have evidence is very convincing to a lot of people. Uh, that's a problem a lot of bad nonfiction authors do. They, like, fill their books with, like, 800,000 footnotes. And then if you actually pick through them one by one, you find they don't prove anything. And yet again, you make this claim, but you don't provide any specific example. What screenshots did I pop up on screen that didn't prove my point? If we're talking about the shit with Lyo ghosting me, you can read the fucking DMs yourself. I know this is insane to you. But on YouTube, there's a little thing called a pause button. If you want to read the screenshot, and it's a too short for you to read, you can pause the video and read it. I know that's fucking crazy, right? When did they add that? All right. Any other questions? I have a question. Sunny! Slyo, what's your favorite color? Not the time, Sunny, but thank you. Okay. She felt like an interrogation. Well, I need to be able to answer people. If I'm going to be in any way, shape, or form a figurehead of anything or an authority on anything, I have to be accountable. A prerequisite of that that many people, especially in art commentary, ignore. If you're going to try and be one of these figureheads, you have to answer questions honestly. And while I can't comment on anything to do with Lyo's found family, the shit that he's spoken about to do with the FCK server or me has not been honest. All right, do we have any other questions? I have oh, one. Geez, I forgot. I have my TV on. All right, so what's the question? Don't you think it's kind of concerning that a lot of people in social media don't question claims that are very serious? Well, well, of course, that's why you have people like Ponder, Peaches, and I constantly telling people they need to do their own thinking and come to their own conclusions. One, 
Ponder is a terrible fucking example because she has an audience that will believe anything that she says. They do not question a fucking thing that she says. That's the dichotomy or the irony of the failure of her purpose. Secondly, you all tried to invite Mad Libs into the server to dog on her and berate her for misinformation because she spoke about something that literally fucking happened. But you didn't like that it was acknowledged. You didn't like that the bullshit excuses weren't mentioned when it was talked about. So you called it misinformation. That's not encouraging people to think freely. That's labeling a truth is misinformation because it's inconvenient for your narrative. I see. Because, uh, this is, this is worrying the constant throughout the internet, and I, and I don't like seeing it. it. There's, like, like, documents with no evidence, and I'm like, oh, this is concerning. So oh. I just say, hmm. Yeah, well, the thing is that these people don't care. These people don't care about uh, what is allegedly, like, happening. They don't care about the alleged actions of alleged abusers. They don't care, because they, I hate to tell you this, they don't care about the actions of the victims. What they care about is, is getting a gotcha on people that they don't like. That's the unfortunate reality of, of this situation. My, my concern wasn't even with like the accuser at, at this point it's more like the people who just take it at face value Ugh. yeah well, some people take it some people will will eat, eat up whatever you tell them simply because they they may also not like a person the fact that this was said in a fucking Senate call is amazing, and this is one of my favorite parts about the call, hands down. That lack of self-awareness rears its ugly head again. It's really ironic to talk about how other people are trying to paint a narrative because they're showing actual screenshots that you have access to that you could go through at any point and cross-reference the screenshots in my video with the logs that you yourself have, and then point out that something is faked, but nothing in my video is faked, which is why you haven't done that yet. You're just claiming that I'm misrepresenting it. And also, so he's been trying to paint this, and he's going to try to paint this when he responds in his big video, as though this is some plot to take him down. I wasn't going to start talking about you remotely until you chose to get involved and start lying about the whole thing, lying about me, lying about my video, to try and do damage control for Peaches and the FCK. They knew that there was at least one miner in the server. That being Slamers. Many of them knew Slamers' age, whether she mentioned it in the server or they acknowledged her fucking age before the server even existed. That has been confirmed through interactions in the server and from her testimony. They knew that she was in there. Yet here he is trying to convince these people, well, we don't know for certain. You have the fucking logs. You do know for certain. And yet he's trying to paint this as some plot to take him down and undercut his credibility. No, you did that yourself. Had you not lied, people wouldn't be questioning you right now. The second thing he's going to do is something he's also always fucking done, which is dig up dirt on people to then try and distract away from the current topic so that people don't talk about the FCK server. He's going to try and shift the topic to other shit, to other people. He does this constantly. He does it in Senate calls. He did it in the conundrum video trying to shift the topic to fuchsia butter or toasty vanilla when we can just talk about all the people involved. The Nezzy call is a perfect example. He was perfectly fine with the conversation being shoehorned into mean and rude things that I said. That's what Lyo does, and that's exactly what he's going to do. And if I'm wrong, about this, this isn't something that Lyo does, then explain to me why he's trying to find out who's behind the Fruitcake Leaks account, rather than just prove that the logs that they've released are photoshopped or doctored, because he can't. He knows that the screenshots and the recordings they've released publicly aren't photoshopped or doctored to present false information to the audience, so he's trying to target the person behind it to discredit the account. That's how fucking desperate Lyo Convoy is. But hopefully, you all take this video, share it around, and maybe some more Senate tards can see just how fucking dishonest he is.